Secretary of Treasury. Secretary of Treasury. Deals with money. Deals with money. Secretary. Hi, and welcome back to Mr. Raymond's Civics EOC Academy, where today we are going to review for the big exam, the State Civics EOC. Again, this is just a review, so we're going to go through things pretty quickly. We're going to cover what the state is most likely to ask you on your test. These study sessions are divided into four parts, and just a reminder, teachers, these PowerPoints with practice tests will be available at Teachers Pay Teachers. Just search for Mr. Raymond Civics EOC Academy. And the first part, is the origins and purposes of law and government or the ideas that our government is founded on. So let's start at the beginning. What do you need to know about John Locke? Hopefully you remember that John Locke was a big inspiration for our founding fathers. And you can see in the benchmark that you need to know his ideas about natural law and the social contract. Natural law is sometimes referred to as natural rights. A big question is how John Locke's ideas of natural rights influence Thomas Jefferson in the Declaration of Independence. John Locke said that the purpose of government is to protect life, liberty, and property, and Jefferson changed that to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. For the social contract, Locke's claims that the people enter into an agreement with the government to give up some power and rights in order to get back protection can be seen in questions on obeying the law, the constitution, the idea of consent of the government. So for Locke, remember your answers are either natural rights, life, liberty, and property. He influenced Jefferson and the Declaration of Independence and the social contract. The other Enlightenment philosopher you need to know is Montesquieu. He wrote about the need to separate power of governing into three branches, legislative to make laws, executive to enforce laws, and judicial to interpret laws. Remember that the framers to the Constitution took it a step further, and Montesquieu wrote about this as well, with checks and balances. But chances are for Montesquieu, they will probably give you a chart with the three branches and ask you which Enlightenment philosopher influenced this. Well, your answer is Montesquieu. Next up, what do you need to know about the Magna Carta? Remember, this is a document that the British nobleman forced the King of England to sign in the year 1215. At the time, monarchs or kings had absolute power. So this was the first time that power was limited. Remember, limited power is one of our principles of the Constitution. So if you see the Magna Carta, that might be your answer. Another big principle is this idea of the rule of law. Not even the king was a Above the law. So that is another possible test question. Other possible questions that could pop up, barons force the king to give them trial by jury. I've seen test questions where they put this description of a jury from the Magna Carta in it. And also the idea that the king needed permission to pass new taxes. The barons, they kind of became his advisors for passing laws, which would evolve into a legislative body like parliament or as we have Congress. Chances are, though, if you are asked asked about the Magna Carta, your answers are either limited government, rule of law, or trial by jury. So what influence did the English Bill of Rights have on the Founding Fathers? Well, as you can imagine just by the name, it had a big influence on our Bill of Rights. It contains a lot of the same rights as our Bill of Rights, such as freedom of speech, our First Amendment, no cruel and unusual punishment, our Eighth Amendment, and even though it's not in the U.S. Bill of Rights, the idea that the king or executive could not pass taxes without the consent of the legislative body, parliament, or in our case, Congress. So look for answers about similar rights or the power of the executive. Next up, what do you need to know about the Mayflower Compact? Remember, this is the document signed by the pilgrims, which establish a government and rules or laws to live by. I've seen a lot of practice test questions that they want you to answer self-government when they ask you about Mayflower Compact. Self-government was the idea that the people would rule themselves, not a bunch of aristocrats or noblemen or kings. Also, the idea that the colonies would rule themselves and not England. Other possible answers the Mayflower Compact established the rule of law. 
a system of laws for everyone to live by. Another possible answer is social contract. Now, technically, this wasn't a social contract since all of the men signed it. It was a real contract. But it has the idea of people agreeing to live under a government. So for the Mayflower Compact, your answers are either self-government, rule of law, or social contract. What was Thomas Paine's common sense? Thomas Paine's pamphlet, Common Sense, came out in 1776, a year after fighting between the British and the colonists had already begun and conquered in Lexington. Now, this was a small book or pamphlet, so if you see the word pamphlet, you know they're talking about Paine's Common Sense. It was explaining why it made common sense that the United States, still part of Great Britain, should be its own country. And this was an extremely popular pamphlet with the Founding Fathers, and it definitely pushed the country in the direction of declaring our independence from the British. What events led to the Declaration of Independence? Here we need to know how English policies and their responses to our complaints led to the Declaration of Independence. Remember, there were big complaints over the taxes, the Stamp Act, the Sugar Act, the Tea Act, which wasn't really a tax, and the colonists were especially mad because they didn't have a say in these British policies. No taxation without representation. They also sent a large number of troops over and the Quartering Act forced the colonists to house the British soldiers. When the colonists complained, the British refused to acknowledge or respond to their complaints. Also remember things like the Boston Massacre and finally Lexington and Concord, in which fighting had started before we even declared our independence. So for questions about events leading up to the declaration, your answers are either the taxes, the British British soldiers and the quartering acts, or how they ignored our complaints. What does the Declaration of Independence say? You don't have to know exactly word for word what the Declaration says, but there are some different sections that you have to be familiar with. The first is the natural rights slash role of government section. And again, you have to remember that this is the section that was inspired by John Locke. Whereas John Locke said the purpose of government is to protect life, liberty, and property, Thomas Jefferson changed that, some would say plagiarized that, to be life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. This is why we have government. This section also has the consent of the governed idea that the people are the ones with power in other words popular sovereignty or social contract the people give their consent to be ruled another enlightenment idea the people should alter or abolish the government if it takes away their rights the other section you need to know is the grievances section the grievances are the official complaints the things the colonists were mad about and why they were declaring their independence this is a long list of complaints, and one way to know that this is the grievous section, if they give you a, an excerpt or a passage, is that the complaints are addressed to the king. It says, he did this and he did that. The big ones you should memorize are that he taxed the colonies without their consent, he suspended trial by jury, he limited their judicial powers, in other words, he took away their courts, he didn't let them trade with other countries, and Finally, he dissolved their legislatures, which means he got rid of their governing or lawmaking bodies. All of these complaints mean that the king in Great Britain took away the colonists' political and individual rights. So, since they were no longer part of Great Britain, the colonists needed a government, so they wrote the first rule book or constitution for a government called the Articles of Confederation. But that didn't work. You are likely to get a question about why the Articles of Confederation did not work. So the weaknesses of the Articles of Confederation for your test are that it only created one branch, a legislative body or Congress. There was no executive or president to enforce the laws, no judicial branch or national court system to interpret them. The Articles were also very rigid or hard to change. It was really hard to pass laws requiring a big majority, 9 out of 13 states, and it was almost impossible to create changes or amendments. It required all 13 states to agree. Another big weakness was that they couldn't regulate trade. Finally, one of the biggest weaknesses, which your test is most likely to ask you, is that they couldn't pass taxes. A government without money is definitely too weak. Of all of the questions on the articles that I've seen, 
the questions about not having taxes or not being able to enforce laws are the most common. Now, the event that showed the country that the Articles was too weak was Shays' Rebellion. Remember when the farmers rose up and took over big parts of western Massachusetts? The country knew that we needed a stronger national government to provide things like a military. If you see Shays' Rebellion on your test, and I'm not sure you will, it will be how this event showed that the Articles was too weak. Since the Articles didn't work, the founding fathers wrote a new constitution and its first section was called the preamble. The preamble laid out the goals of the government and you need to be able to identify these goals. The first part is not a goal but the first three words we the people is probably the most famous part of this section and the constitution and a very probable test question. We the people is the idea that the people are in charge or popular sovereignty people power. Next, in order to form a more perfect union, remember union is the United States, so this is the goal to make a better country. Establish justice means to make a fair country, ensure domestic tranquility, remember domestic means inside the country, and tranquility means peaceful, so this goal means to keep the country peaceful, promote the general welfare means to make sure that the people are healthy and happy, secure the blessings of liberty means to provide freedom to ourselves and our posterity, posterity again means future generations, so this constitution was for them but for the future of America. So your test will most likely give you examples or scenarios and you'll have to pick out which goal of the preamble they are talking about. More perfect union is the states coming together. Established justice is usually about our court systems or laws. Ensure domestic tranquility might be the police who have the job of keeping the peace. Promote the general welfare would be programs that help people like schools, healthcare, or assistance for the poor or elderly. And securing the blessings of liberty is making sure everyone is free and treated equally. What are separations of powers and checks and balances? Well, we already talked about separation of powers with Montesquieu. Remember, a central theme in this course is making sure that no part of the government has too much power. Too much power can lead to abuse of power or tyranny. Tyranny, a tyrant, this is a word that's likely to pop up on your test. And this fear of power is also the idea behind checks and balances, which was a way for the three branches to stop each other if they felt the other branch was doing something wrong. For example, judicial review, the power of the Supreme Court to declare a law passed by Congress as unconstitutional is a check of the judicial branch by the Supreme Court. The president's power to veto or try to stop a law, and Congress's ability to impeach or remove from office the president or a Supreme Court justice if they're doing something wrong. There's other checks, but those are the big ones that you're most likely to be tested on. What is the rule of law? Remember, the rule of law is the idea that we are a country guided by laws and not leaders, although certainly leaders play a big role in making those laws. The rule of law is to protect us, again, from tyranny or abuse of power. The rule of law is also the idea that our leaders must follow the law. President Nixon's Watergate scandal, which we will look at later, is our number one example of a leader thinking they are above the law. The rule of law is also what keeps a country safe and secure and protects our rights. If you have a question about the rule of law, it'll probably be a leader or government official doing something wrong and then getting into trouble. And your question, what principle of democracy is being shown here? Well, your answer is rule of law. What are the, quote, sources of law? Remember, a source means where something comes from. So sources are where we got our ideas for laws. We talked about the history of laws that can be traced all the way back to the Code of Hammurabi thousands of years ago. We are a country that was also influenced by English common law, in which precedents or rulings of previous court cases help us establish our own court system. So you might see a question with these and other things like the Code of Justinian or 
or another old system of law? And your answer to the question would be, these are sources of American law. What are the types of laws? The four main types of law you need to know are civil, criminal, constitutional, and military. Civil are disputes between individuals and corporations, usually over contracts and property and often resulting in the form of money. Criminal laws for those people who do bad things that impact our safety. Constitutional law is usually about rights or government power. And military are the special rules and laws for those who are serving in the armed forces. They might give you a question with three out of these four and make up a type of law and ask you which one is not a type of law. They might also show you amendments or articles and the Constitution and your answer would be constitutional law. And that is the end of part one, origins and purposes of law and government. Up next, we're going to look at the roles, rights, and responsibilities of citizenship. So be sure to subscribe. You're a quarter of the way through acing your exam.